Good evening. I hope you're as glad to be here tonight as I am. Uh, I had to miss most of the service last night. I, I get in at, at the last high note of the preaching. And then I come in and I said, where's the preaching? <laughs> he had already preached it. <laughs> but uh, I'm looking forward to hearing uh, Brother Nelson preach here in a little bit. Uh, some singers sing. And we're running revival meeting through the end of the week, and we'd be glad to have you tell folk about it and, and, uh, and tell them that we're more than welcome to come. What, what do you got for a song? Whatever that is, 333. Get you a songbook and turn to page 333. Yeah. 333. I think everybody knows this one, so we're in good shape. If you haven't shook anybody's hand, why don't you do that while we sing this song? What do you say? Maybe. You might like them, you might not. Do you feel like standing up? No. First thing I hear is no. All right, stand up if you can. Let's do it that way. If you can. Okay. Go ahead. We won't sing that much, but okay, 6.30. If there's somebody in the choir that you don't see here tonight, give them a call. Amen. Thank you. <clears throat> I'll tell you what, let's go to uh, the Lord in prayer before we uh, turn the singers loose tonight. Uh, keep uh, Bud Noble in your prayers. He, he's been having a, a, a terrible time with his breathing. And then uh, uh, 
Tammy uh, Gilbert uh, texted me this evening and said her uncle Larry, uh, Larry McKenzie, uh, the doctor said that he, he had gone just as far as he could with the chemo and said now they're, they're just going to try to to keep him comfortable. So let's remember, I, I told her, I said we'd continue to pray. I said it's it's not over until it's over as long as there's life. So we'll, we'll continue to pray. Anybody else have uh, a request before we pray tonight? Yes. We'll remember him tonight. Anyone else? Unspoken? Yeah. Let's remember this. I'm sure everybody in the house has somebody tonight. Let's pray for souls. Uh, uh, we need Holy Ghost conviction to uh, uh, to come, and and then we'll we won't have to beg people to the altar. They'll they'll come running. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. You lead out as the Lord would lead you tonight. Let's just take our time. We don't have to be quick uh, to get up. We can just pray, pray, pray. Our heavenly Father, Lord, once again we come to you in that great and mighty name called Jesus. Thank you, dear Father, for the goodness, the mercy, the love. Thank you, dear Father. Amen. For the privilege, thank God, that we have tonight coming boldly before the throne of grace that we might receive help and find that strength in our times of trouble. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for this gathering. Lord, you said where two or three were gathered in your name. There you be in our midst. We come together tonight, this brethren. We realize our Heavenly Father above all things. We need you tonight. We pray that the Holy Spirit will go from heart to heart, from breast to breast, Heavenly Father, we'd have a time of refreshing like we've not seen in many a days when the Spirit of the living God falls afresh and anew upon our hearts. Oh, we thank you, Father, for our brother. We pray, Heavenly Father, that thou would give special anointing uh, to Brother Nelson, Lord, as he preaches tonight. And, oh, God, that thou would give each one of us our listening ears, uh, that our Father, we might hear what the Spirit goes to say to us. Oh, we pray that Holy Spirit tonight as our singers come, that you would bless and encourage them, Heavenly Father. And, Lord God, just help them, Lord, to work hand in hand with the preacher. That when all things are said and done at the close of the service, thy God souls a move toward an altar of prayer. We thank you, Father, Lord God, that we know that you're still on the throne and you're still, oh Lord God, the great healer. And Lord, we pray for Bud that thou would touch him, Heavenly Father. I, I know that the Lord, he's had his ups and his downs and we pray that Holy Spirit, that thou would touch him in a mighty way tonight. Uh, uh, that Lord God, he'd have his breath and, and Lord God, that, that all things would be like they should. And then Lord God, for Larry McKenzie, Heavenly Father, we, we said as long as there's life, uh, there's possibility and we pray that Heavenly Father Father, that you would touch him, lift him up. And there's others, Lord God, we call Crystal. Uh, uh, Lord God, you know the shingles. We pray that thou would touch her up, that you, you would help her, oh God. And there's others, Lord, that, that we've been praying for. We just ask you, Father, move upon them. And Lord, tonight, allow us, Heavenly Father, that I have that freedom, that Lord, that we might worship you uh, in spirit and in truth. And for all things that you do, we'll give you the praise and the glory. For it's in Jesus' mighty name that we ask these things. Amen. 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 I'll tell you what, uh, maybe I'll have Sam back up here tonight. Uh, he, what I caught of it, he, he did a great job. Uh, and uh, uh, But he's not trying to take my job, is he? <laughs> Sam, don't you take my job. <laughs> Amen. Well, the one thing I want to say is, as I do in, in every uh, revival meeting, there's an offering box back there. And if you're, uh, we'll take up one offering this week. That'll be on Friday night. 
and everything that that is given will be given uh, to our evangelists so uh, if you think he did a great job preaching last night and you're not going to be here Friday night put some money in the box and uh, and I'm sure the Lord will bless you for it all right uh, singers come sing for us I'd like to say good evening to everybody. Appreciate this opportunity to witness once again for the Lord. I love him this evening. I praise him and I appreciate him and pray that we'll sing something that will bless your heart and stuff. And most of our songs are old, so if you know them, sing them with us. We're going to start out with an a cappella one. You ready? Many years I've been looking for a place to call home. But I failed here to find it, so I must travel on. I don't care for fine mansions on or sinking sand. Lord, build me a cabin in the corner of glory land. Lord, build me just a cabin in the corner of glory land. In the shade of the tree of life That it may ever stand Where I can just hear the angels sing And shake Jesus' hand Lord, build me a cabin in the corner Of glory land Blessed Lord, I'm not asking To live in thy midst for I know I'm not worthy of such splendor like this. But I'm asking for mercy while on me I stand. Lord, build me a cabin in the corner of glory land. I have many loved ones who have gone on their way. On that great final morning, shall I hear them all say, Come and join in the singing and play in our band. Build me a cabin in the corner of glory land. Lord, build me just a cabin in the corner of glory land. In the shade of the tree of life That it may ever stand Where I can just hear the angels sing And shake Jesus' hand Build me a cabin in the corner Of glory land <clears throat> Second one Everybody will be happy. There's a happy land of promise over in the great beyond Where the saved of earth shall soon his glory share Where the souls of men shall enter and live on forevermore Everybody will be happy over there Everybody, Everybody will be happy over there. We'll be happy over there. We will shout we and sing will His praises. Shout and and sing His praises. Everybody will be happy over there. There will be nobody praying in the morning in that land. For no burdens there will be for us to bear. All the people will be singing glory, glory to the Lamb. Everybody will be happy over there. 
There we'll meet the one who saved us and who kept us by his grace and who brought us to that land so bright and fair. We will praise his name forever as we look upon his face. Everybody will be happy over there. Everybody, Everybody will, be will, will be happy. There. We'll be happy, happy over there. We will shout, we will shout and sing his praise. Everybody will be happy over there. Everybody, Everybody will be happy. We'll be happy, happy over there. We will shout, we will shout and sing his praise. Everybody will be happy over there. Everybody will be happy over there. Yes, the war still rages on You don't have to be defeated Though you're struggling to hold on Oh, my brother, my sister I am here to stand with you You are still an overcomer And by faith you make it through Fight on Fight on Through the darkest night When hope seems nearly gone In the name of Jesus The battle will be So keep holding to your sword For your weapons are so mighty Through the Spirit of the Lord Oh, be strong and take courage He will never let you fall In the morning light of victory You'll say it was worth it all. Fight on, fight on. Through the darkest night when hope seems nearly gone. In the name of Jesus, the battle will be won fight on weary soldier fight on fight on fight on through the darkest night when hope seems nearly gone in the blessed name of Jesus the battle will be won fight on weary soldier
If anyone has a testimony, feel free. Like the prodigal son, I wandered in darkness, and I traded my life for a worldly good time. No peace in my heart I ever could find. And I got so tired Yes, I got so tired Of eating after the swine So I believe I'll go home And be with the Father The table is spread The table is spread And they're waiting for me The Father coming down to greet me. Lord, I'm willing to be. Lord, I'm willing to be just a servant for Thee. Just a servant for Thee. Like the prodigal son, I wander from Jesus. But the good shepherd saw Through the heat and the cold The ninety and nine He left in the fold Just to find this lost sheep Just to find this lost sheep That was hungry and cold so I believe I'll go home and be with the Father. The table is spread. The table is spread and they're waiting for me. I can see the, the Father coming down to greet me. Just a servant for thee, 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 just a servant for thee. <laughs> when the time comes and I'm standing at the river That separates the two worlds that I love Torn between my precious friends and my family And the place of peace that's waiting up above Hold my hand and stay there by my side And when I finally step into the tide Celebrate me home Celebrate me there Celebrate me in that land of wonder Where nothing can compare Celebrate me in that place Celebrate me saved by grace Don't just sit and weep because I'm gone Celebrate me home spent most of my life on earth preparing 
to take that trip from here to heaven's door. It's a comfort knowing not. It's a comfort knowing I am not alone. So when I take my Fade into the gentle sleep of death Celebrate me home Celebrate me there Celebrate me in that land of wonder Where nothing can compare Celebrate me in that place Celebrate me saved by grace don't just sit and weep because I'm gone. Celebrate me home. No more broken dreams. No more tears to cry. Into my father's arms I'll fly. Celebrate me home, celebrate me there, celebrate me in that land of wonder where nothing can compare. Celebrate me in that place, celebrate me say by grace, don't just sit and weep because I'm gone. Celebrate me home. Celebrate me We don't ever want to see our loved ones leave, but what a comfort it is to know that we can celebrate their home going. So thankful for the Lord tonight. So thankful for what he does for us. He's so good to us and we fail to praise him a lot of the time. I'm thankful for a praying mother. I'm thankful that my mom got saved as a young, young woman at the age of 16 and she never gave up. My dad didn't get saved till he was 75, but I thank the Lord that we're all saved. We're all on our way to heaven and I appreciate what the Lord can do and how that he can send good friends our way and make them family. We adopted Visa years ago and Philip's dad, or Adam's dad, Philip, which Philip don't get to sing with us much anymore. He works a lot, but we adopted him years ago and stuff and we've always just been good friends, sung together, we just love the Lord. We just appreciate what the Lord can do. How that he can help us through the bad times, through the good times. He's always right there with us. Took me a long, long time to realize that he cares about what's important to me. No matter how big, how small, whatever it is, it's important to me. And that verse that says, he'll give us the desires of our heart. I used to ask Eddie Markham all the time, well, does that mean he'll give us what we should desire or will he give us what we want to desire what we desire and I think it's a little bit of both I think he puts us in the right direction to desire the right things and I just I can't I just can't thank him enough for how good how good he is how that he helps us and takes care of us I appreciate him this evening oh, okay. <laughs> You see your brother standing by the road With a heavy load from the seeds he sowed And you see your sister falling by the way Just stop and say, you're going the wrong way You've got to try a little kindness Yet show a little kindness Shine your light for everyone to see Try a little kindness Then you overlook the blindness Of the narrow-minded people On the narrow 
mind is free. Of the narrow-minded people on the narrow-minded streets. You've got to try a little kindness. Yes, show a little kindness. Shine your light for everyone to see. And if you'll try a little kindness, then you'll overlook the blindness of the narrow-minded people on the narrow-minded streets. You know, those, those words put me to the test this week. They really did. It was really hard. <laughs> Jesus.
and live in the sunshine. We'll understand it all by and by. We've got one more and then we'll get out of the way for the, so the preacher can get up here. We hope that we've sung something that touched you tonight. I'm going home with Jesus. Oh, she trying to kill me tonight, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> she tried to kill me. <laughs> I'm going home with Jesus in the twinkling of an eye. And I've made my reservation for a mansion in the sky. I may not know the moment. Or I may not know the day, but I know that I'll be leaving when he calls his church away. Yes, I'm going home with Jesus in the twinkling of an eye. And I made my reservation for a mansion in the sky. I may not know the moment, or I may not know the day, but I know that I'll be leaving when he calls his church away. Now I'm listening for the trumpet to sound most any time and the crown of life that's waiting thank god will soon be won yes i've got my invitation from a place called calvary yes. and by the precious blood of jesus the trip's been paid for me yes i'm going home with jesus in the twinkling of an eye and i made my reservation for a mansion in the sky i may not know the moment or I may not know the day, but I know that I'll be leaving when he calls his church away. The captain of the vessel is calling, get on board, and the destination's heaven, safe on the crystal shore. We'll meet again the Savior and our loved ones who have gone and live for all eternity. Oh, yes, we're going home. Well, I'm going home with Jesus in the twinkling of an eye and i made my reservation for a mansion in the sky i may not know the moment or may not know the day but i know that i'll be leaving when he calls his church away i'm going home with jesus in the twinkling of an eye and i made my reservation for a mansion in the sky i may not know the moment or I may not know the day, but I know that I'll be leaving when he calls his church away. I may not know the moment, or I may not know the day, but I know that I'll be leaving when he calls his church away. with Jesus in the twinkling of an eye and I made my reservation for a mansion in the sky I may not know the moment or I may not know the day but I know that I'll be leaving when he calls his church away yes I'm going home with Jesus in the twinkling of an eye and I made my reservation for a mansion in the sky I may not know the moment or I may not know the day, but I know that I'll be leaving when he calls his church away. I may not know the moment, or I may not know the day, but I know that I'll be leaving when he calls his church away.
Praise the Lord this evening. That is the hope of the children of God tonight. It is that that uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that this evening in Matthew chapter 24. You have your Bibles you want to read with us? You can turn there just in a moment. Uh, we'll endeavor to share from there what we feel the Lord's laid upon our heart. And... Um, I don't know what else is going on in the west end of Huntington tonight, but I can tell you this, what we're doing right here uh, is of the utmost importance. And uh, for that individual in particular, I, I say that for all of us, because we're about the Father's business tonight, and you can't get any involved in anything greater than that. Uh, but I also say that uh, th this tonight as well, that... For anyone that sits under the sound of our voice or in the presence of this place tonight, if you don't know the Lord uh, as, a, as your personal Savior, now that's, a, that's a, an old, old phrase of the church, but that's exactly what it is. It's a personal thing tonight. You're not riding in on somebody else's coat tail or shirt tail or him or anything else. You'll go because you've got a relationship with Christ. He died for you and he died for me. I know that he died for the whole world. The scripture tells us that and teaches that as well. But he died for the individual. And until it is appropriated in the individual's life, his death means nothing for them. But the moment that we believe and, and ask God and look God and heaven's way tonight, all that Christ done becomes real in our life. And as we shared last night a little bit about that, the opening of our vision and how we're able to see the kingdom of heaven, see things that we were never able to see before because we were blinded to those things. And in fact, the scripture says the God of this world, little g, so about Satan, has blinded the eyes of those that, the one, very ones that Christ died for, lest that they should see the glorious light of the gospel. Be delivered from that great death tonight that we're facing. Uh, we find these words tonight in Matthew's Gospel, the 24th chapter. And we're going to read down toward the latter part of the chapter. This entire chapter uh, deals uh, lots of stuff going on in this chapter. But we're going to pick up the reading in verse 42. And uh, we'll read from there a little bit. Solomon said of old, uh, in uh, one of his writings, he said, Because sentence against an evil work, or the evildoer, the sentence that's passed, or the reward that's passed, he said, Because the sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. He said, Therefore it is set in the hearts of men to do evil continually. He said, Though a man would sin day by day for a hundred years, even though that would take place and it would just continue to go on or a hundred times and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that it should be well with them that fear God, which fear before him. Yeah. Now we are living in a world tonight that is exampled of, of what Solomon's talking about there, that just people are continually, continually reveling in the evil work and the evil doings of this world. And here's the warning tonight in, in the book of Matthew, chapter 24. He said, watch therefore. These are words that Christ used greatly in his ministry. He used words like watch and be sober, be vigilant, all meaning the same thing. Verse 42, watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the goodman of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye, be ye also ready for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But 
And if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I'm sure you're aware of it tonight, and if you're not, I'm going to repeat it again, or if you are, I'm just repeating it. If you're not, then here it comes. Everything that God has ever made, or God has ever promised, or God ever wants to try to do in this world, and in this land of ours today, and in the history of man, you, have found, you will find tonight that Satan will try to counterfeit that. And he will endeavor to deceive this evening, and that's one of the great warnings of the book of Revelation and in the book of, of the entirety of the Bible as well, is the danger of being deceived. The danger of believing a lie and being damned. The dangers the scripture talks about of failing to see the, clear, the clarity of the right way and the correct way. The danger tonight, as we alluded to, as Solomon said, because when people begin to look around and they see that it's seemingly that evil would go on and that there's no judgment or there's nothing that's being done about it, and because of that, Solomon said, because the judgment does not come or the sentence does not come speedily, that would lead man to, to do even more of, of the same stuff and even worse. And we would see the danger of that tonight, even in that. And we know tonight of those, if you know the Bible this evening and know anything about God, we know that it is the long-suffering of God that allows men to continue on. And I would venture to say for most of us tonight, we did not respond the first time that God came and spoke to our heart. And He had to suffer long with some of us as well. And we continued on in our evil lifestyle and our sinful ways. And God just kept a coming and kept a dealing with our heart. And some of us no doubt said no multiple times. And then there was a day and a time. If you were saved tonight, there was some point in your life where you stopped saying no and you said yes to the Lord. And what you have in your heart and your life tonight and what you received in that hour is the gift of God. And we're sure thankful that God didn't execute uh, the sentence that we deserve very speedily in our life, but that He was merciful. But if we're not careful tonight, the very mercy of God and long-suffering of God, the enemy will use that against us. And those things in our life, as Solomon spoke of, and we see it in the Scriptures, that people get an idea, and Peter wrote about it as well, that there would be a generation that would come upon the earth. He called them, the, they would be scoffers. They would scoff at the idea that the Lord was going to return, and they would begin to say, where is the promise of His coming? Because all things are continuing on since we were just young lads is what Peter was saying. Since our mothers and fathers, we've heard those sayings. And no doubt tonight, if you, unless you've been living in a, in a capsule and not in the world somewhere along the line, Hopefully you heard him sing that, that last song tonight, that he's coming in a moment in a twinkling of an eye and he's going to take those that are ready and prepared and he's going to take them home to a place called heaven. And we know that tonight and realize that somewhere along the line, that day is closer today than it was yesterday. But because God allows and he's long suffering to us word and he still has the door open tonight, it's sometimes uh, the devil uses that against the people uh, and they set up in their heart that they think they've got plenty of time uh, because the calendar is flipped over again today for you uh, and in our lives all of us has been guilty at some point and somewhere in our life uh, as the calendars keep flipping over we just get in the rut if you will that uh, today will be the same as it was yesterday uh, and the yesterday before that uh, and we think that we've just got plenty of time uh, past and I were talking before it seems like the longer we live here upon this earth that those the, the flipping of the pages on the calendar
calendar goes so much quicker. It seemed like I was just starting school. And here it is, it let out last week and it's just flown by. And children grow up and people go on. And my friend, before we know it, we turn around and not just a day or two's went by, but 10 years has went by and you still may not be saved tonight. You may have every intention of getting saved. You may fully intend before you leave this world to get right with God. But we have no promise of tomorrow. Even though yesterday we had a day, today we've got a day. We have no promise of that tomorrow. We have no promise that when we leave this world that we'll be in our right mind to call upon God. And therefore, not what the devil says tonight, but what God says is today is the day of salvation. We're not to put it off till tomorrow or the next week or the next month. But God says do it right now. But the devil will counterfeit that tonight. He'll play even upon the sympathies of God and the mercy and the long suffering of God and endeavor to get people to believe that they've got forever, that they've got plenty of time to get ready. But my friend, we look upon the world we're living in tonight and I touched on it a little bit last night as well. We don't see the conviction like we once saw and I still preach tonight. Amen, I know that it goes contrary to the rest of the religious world or much of it tonight, but I still believe in old fashioned things like we've got to repent. Amen, we've got to be sorry for our sins and we've got to be convicted in our heart and according to John chapter 16, the only way we can be convicted is that the Holy Spirit would come and reprove this world or convict this world of righteousness, of sin and of righteousness and of judgment to come. And so we, that it is a must tonight. It doesn't matter how many prayers you pray, how many times you repeat after somebody. If you're not convicted in your heart, you've not repented of your sins, you cannot be saved. The born again experience tonight is to be born from above, not born from the sideways, not born from beneath, but to be born from above. That means it comes down from God. It's not something that I can give you or my friend someone else can give you, but only God himself can bestow the blessed of my friend of forgiveness of sin can only come from God. And he says that needs to be done today. He tells us and he gives us that word to watch. Why? Because if Christ were to come today, he's talking about and giving that even in that first century, using that word watch there. And he says several things in the text tonight. And we know in the entirety of the word of God this evening that there is the promise and the idea of that tonight as well. That one writer, I believe it was Paul and Peter and some of those boys, they used different phrases, but one of them, he talked, I think, about to Titus. He talked about the blessed hope. And that blessed hope tonight is that the Lord Jesus is going to return. And when he does return, my friend, I, again, I know and I, I know as an evangelist, I try not to get into too much doctrinal stuff. Amen, because I know we can differ on some things tonight. But when I read the word of God tonight and when the Holy Spirit comes, amen, and I know it takes the Holy Spirit to convict of sin tonight. It takes the Holy Spirit to draw a people unto a Savior. Amen, when the Lord returns and he comes tonight, I'll preach it to you this way. It'll be too late then. Amen, when the Lord returns whatever else you may think of is going to go on this earth when the Lord returns salvation as we know it that day when the Lord returns the door will be shut and no one can open that door once God shuts it the scripture says tonight that the blessed hope this evening does two or three things for us and I, I, I say this tonight when I look about and I, it don't take very much to get excited to hear him sing about that or to read the scripture to think about because it is that very thing to me. It is a blessed hope. I used that word blessed last night. Here it is again. It is something that makes me happy. Amen. To know tonight that my Savior is going to return for me and he's going to return without sin unto salvation. I'm going to get out of this old body, get a body like an unto his and go to a place that God dwells in tonight that is perfect. Don't take me very long to get happy about that, to be blessed. Doesn't take very much of that to, make, to fill me with potential tonight, to know what's awaiting out there, to know just a little bit about it. 
amen, than what we find in the scriptures. But he calls it the blessed hope tonight because it is a purifying hope. First John tells us, I believe it was John tell, tells us and gives us that great idea of how that God loves us and has called us to be his children. And he said, beloved, we are now the sons of God and yet it doth not appear what we shall be. But he said, we do know this, that when he appears, we shall be like him. But then it doesn't stop there. But he said, every man that hath this hope purifieth himself even as he is pure. Oh, that is a constraint. The blessed hope tonight is a purifying hope. It draws me closer to my Savior and it puts a desire down inside of me. Not just that I'm happy tonight that he's coming, but because he's coming, I'm blessed because that hope tonight that spurs me on and draws me under the heart purity that God wants for each and every one of us. It's a purifying hope. There's a growth tonight. So I shared a little bit last night about holiness and, and we still believe that and preach that and, and, and know that there's a work. But even that, when we talk about salvation, when we talk about sanctification, any of those things, I, I believe in the moment and the crisis, if you will, of that. But as I preached to you last night, that's just the beginning. It's not an end all. Hey, man, when I was saved, it happened in a moment of time. But my friend, it's been a great journey ever since then and it's been salvation all along the way. Amen. That point in time when you surrender all to God, that, can, that happens in a moment of time. Amen. But can I preach to you tonight? That's just the beginning. Amen. There's a growth in it. And I, I preach tonight. That's only, only then can you really begin to grow in the way that you need to grow. And it is the blessed hope tonight that draws us in that way. We can grow. It is a blessed hope tonight because it is what causes us to be diligent in our service. Jesus said it like this in Luke 19 when he was talking along these lines as well. He talked about his servants and how he would call them and he gave one ten pounds. Now in the other gospel writers he called them talents but in Luke he called them pounds. And he said this and he used this little phrase. He said, occupy till I come. And that is what the blessed hope tonight is about, that our Lord is going to return. And he's going to return one day. He's telling them here, watch, because you don't know what hour it is. But all the days that I'm waiting till he comes, I want to occupy till he does come. In other words, as the gospel writer said, I want to be that servant that is being found, being faithful in what God has given him to do, that when Jesus returns, I will not be ashamed. And that's the blessed hope that does that, that causes us not to do it half-hearted. You find somebody serving Jesus half-hearted, they've lost the glimmer of the blessed hope. Amen, thank you. You find someone without the zeal and the enthusiasm of serving God, whatever it is, whether it's great or small or something in between, if they're lacking in the zeal and the ardor of serving God and they're doing it less than 100%, they've lost the glimpse of the blessed hope. Jesus said, I'm gonna come until I do come. He said, occupy. And that's a wonderful word tonight. It's not a lazy word. It's not a half-hearted word. He said, occupy. Not only is the blessed hope a purifying hope, not only does it, uh, it just produces that diligence in our service, but it also gives us patience in our suffering. He tells us this, and I know I was on this again tonight. I didn't mean to be on it again, uh, or last night. I didn't mean to be on it again tonight, but here it is. Second Thessalonians chapter one. Paul was writing to that little church at Thessalonica, and they were one of the, the early churches that suffered great persecution. And they were suffering under some great and, and some just relentless pressure from the world and the enemy. And they were just a young fledgling church and Paul wrote this letter to them. And he said, your patience and your faith in all of your persecutions and tribulations that you endure. It was a source of joy when Paul heard that. Paul said, I've heard the reports how the great persecutions come and the, and the tribulation and all of those things. But he said, I've heard about your faith and your patience. You're enduring, if you will. And here's what he said, which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you also suffer, seeing that it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you 
And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with these mighty angels, when he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all of them that believe because our testimony among you was believed in that day. He says there's something about the blessed hope and the thought that Christ is going to return that gives us the source of strength that we can be patient when we endure the things and the affliction and the tribulations that comes our way. He said you can endure to the very end and it's wrapped up with the idea that our Savior is going to return one day, that he has not forgotten us, that he has not turned us over to our enemies, but he's keeping a record and he's gonna return one day and when he does, he'll settle the score. So instead of whining, think about the blessed hope when the tribulations come. I'll say ouch to that one. Instead of looking for a way out, say, Lord, give me the strength and let me think about you, you returning that'll give me the strength to patiently endure. What am I going through? What if Jesus was to come today? It's a little bit after eight o'clock. What if Jesus were to come today before this clock would strike midnight and the calendar would flip over another day? He says, watch, because he said, you don't know what day it's going to be. But I'll tell you this tonight, folks, if this was the day that he was going to come, if this was the day, and we say that and use that little word if, one day it's going to be a reality. One day, as much as we've been used to flipping it over and letting our electronic clocks just go from way to day to the next, as long as we got them plugged in, one day time shall be no more. And if Jesus were to come today, there would be many things that would take place and they would happen suddenly. It would be too late to prepare or get ready. If Jesus were to come today, if he would come for you today, there would be things that would take place because the scripture says, if it says anything about the coming of the Lord Jesus, is that he comes quickly. It's been almost 2,000 years since he came the last time and he ascended back to the Father and for 2,000 years now we've been marching on and it would look like those things have been and during that time, sometimes it looks like the plans of God are moving along slowly but if the Lord would come today, it would be quick. As the writer said, the hour is coming when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God and they that hear shall live. He said, marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which that all, all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. They shall come forth, they that have done good under the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil under the resurrection of damnation. In that day when the Lord returns, there will be a resurrection according to the John's gospel. All are going to get up. When the Lord returns, all that are in the graves in that resurrection are going to come forth. That means the saint and the sinner. When the Lord returns and that shout is given quickly in a moment in a twinkling of an eye, there is going to be a resurrection where all that have died are going to come forth. And then secondly, the scripture says in that day, those that are alive and remain, they'll also be changed. Amen. Why? Because there is those things, this idea today that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom. Flesh and blood does not enter into eternity. And those that have died have already given up their flesh and blood. But those that are alive at the remain and at the coming of the Lord Jesus and they're still alive, they're gonna have to give up this body as well. I, that's why I say with John, even so come Lord Jesus. Amen. I'm ready to give this one up. Amen. And the longer I'm here, the more trouble it causes me. Amen. I look for the day when I can say goodbye to it. But it'll take place in a moment in a twinkling of an eye. And the unbeliever will come forth as well. Jesus were to come to gay. Not only would many things happen suddenly, but there would mean many things that would come to an end. Jesus were to come today, the age of grace would be over. 
I know I have to be careful because we can get, you go talking about the grace of God, you can get bogged down here all evening. When I think about, for me, you have your testimony tonight, you know the particulars about your life. I think about mine. I think about all the way back, what would it be, three, four hundred years ago now, when John Newton first penned those words, amazing grace, how sweet the sound. You probably know his story. I'll just give you the highlights real quick. Slave trader, captain of his own ship. His merchandise was the flesh of other human beings. He bought and sold them like we would sell cattle today. Drunkard and all of the other vices that go along with that. And it was out on the high seas in the midst of a storm. Away from the mainland, away from the church, away from his family, that the grace of God appeared unto him. That Holy Spirit I talked about a little bit earlier arrested him out there on the high seas. And in the midst of that, of his own slave ship now, with no doubt slaves even in the cargo hold, or maybe they had emptied and they were on their way back, but he was on this very ship that had carried, he either was carrying or had carried human flesh that they traded in. And the, the high sheriff of heaven, the Holy Spirit, arrested him right there on the spot. And down in the bowels of that vessel, he surrendered to the grace of God and he was changed forever. And he penned those words, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. That's what he considered himself to be the lowest of the low. Oh, he said, I was once blind, but now I see. I was once lost, I was wretched. I was all of those things, but now I'm found. When Jesus comes, the day of grace will be over. When Jesus comes, all that grace affords tonight, you and I that were with John Newton, alienated from God, standing sinners before God, sinners before this world, sinners in our own right, passed down by the nature of Adam as well, not only by our own choices, but our, by our very fallen nature. And then God in his grace moved beyond all of that and came in and revealed himself, being blinded to those things, being a servant to sin. And some of us, no doubt, more than others, perhaps were better servants even in the sinful life. Some would just do and go wherever sin would lead them and wherever Satan would prompt them to go and their flesh would begin to desire, they'd head down that trail. And then the grace of God, nothing else but the grace of God intersected us on our way down to perdition, on our way down to destruction. The grace of God was revealed unto us that bringeth salvation and it came into our heart and life and won us over but when Jesus comes, the day of grace will be closed. There'll be no opportunity. Jesus were to come today, all the concerns that you have about your material goods would be passed away. You wouldn't be thinking about, and I'm not kicking against keeping your lawn looking nice, but you wouldn't be cared whether it had the stripes and it looked like a golf course or not. Jesus would come tonight, hey, Bat. I told the brother, I plan on, if it's not too wet in the morning, I plan on taking a hoe to the corner. When Jesus comes, I won't care whether there's a weed in my corn or not. I won't care whether there's a new car in the garage or not. When Jesus comes, all of the concern about the material things will be passed away. When Jesus comes, all of the pain is going to be ended. For the child of God, all of the worry and the anxiety and the fretting and the concern, the burdens, whatever you want to call them, will be ended if he were to come today. The mercy of God would cease if he would come today. The time of mercy will be over if Jesus were to come today. Jesus were to come today, we think is what he says here. He said, when he looked upon that, he said, 
you better watch. He said, there's an hour coming when you don't, you don't even know about. He said, and that's when the Lord's going to come. Not only would he come quickly, not only would some things end, but there'd be some things that would begin tonight if Jesus were to come. Jesus were to come this evening, eternity begins. That is a thought and an idea tonight for the, most of us, myself included. It's hard to wrap my mind around that. Because all of our life, some form or fashion, is governed by the clock on the wall. It's governed by the sun coming up in the morning and going down in the evening and the moon appearing and the stars coming and then going away the next morning. And our life is regulated, almost everything about our life is regulated by that. But if Jesus were to come today, the sun, the moon, the stars, and the way of counting time would be obsolete. We'd be into eternity tonight. If Jesus were to come today, then judgment comes. And in that judgment, there is both reward and punishment. In the text that I read to you, in verse 45, he said, Who is that faithful and wise servant to give meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Why? Because he'll make him ruler over all of his goods. But verse 51 says, To that evil servant, that one that was not looking, that one that had not prepared, he shall be cut asunder and point his portion with the hypocrites where there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Jesus were to come today, there is a judgment of all judgments awaiting. Just because sentence is not passed, judgment is not passed speedily, it says it sets up in the hearts of men just to continue to do what they've been doing. But if Jesus were to come, there wouldn't be any other playground left to commit your evil deeds because we'll stand face to face with God Almighty and Jesus Christ in judgment. Jesus were to come today, according to verse 40 and verse 41 tonight, just right before I, where I started reading to you, it would be a time of separation. The dead are going to be separated. The living are going to be separated. It says there'll be two in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. The one will be taken and the other left. Again, it speaks back to what I've already spoke to you about. It speaks to the suddenness of his coming. How quickly. Another gospel writer says, Say not in that day when the Lord comes. If you're out in the field, that you go back down to the house. Or if you're on the housetop, to go back down and try to get something. Even from the housetop down to the lower level, he said there won't be time for that. Jesus were to return today. We see in that hour and that day that the great separation would come. Moms and dads would be separated. You think about living in this life, and I thought of her testimony of her mother being saved at 16 and because of the mercy, and this is a day of grace, her dad got in at 75. But how many tonight that is not true for. And in that day, if Jesus would come, there would be a separation that would come between moms and dads, husbands and wives, between parents and children. One would be saved, the other not, and there would be a separation and there would not be a thing that we could do about it when Jesus comes. What is the answer tonight? What, what does he tell us to do? He says, watch. Wrapped up in that idea of watching tonight before I close my remarks is this idea of being ready. To be ready tonight, you first must get ready. To live in a state of being ready, of readiness, you have to get ready and then you've got to stay ready. And that's why he says to watch. And he gives us the great example tonight and I close with this. If Jesus were to come today, the parable tells us and Jesus tells us here that as it was in the days of Noah, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking. There's nothing particular about that. That's just everyday stuff. They were marrying and given in marriage. Everyday stuff. 
until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Luke says it this way, as it was down in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, that they were building houses. In other words, they were just going on like we are today, continuing on and on and on. But it was in the days of Noah, they did not perceive, they did not understand, even to the day that Noah went into the ark. And it says, they knew not until the flood came and took them away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Oh, how dangerous tonight to not be ready. Jesus were to come today, the opportunity to be ready would be gone forever. And so before he comes tonight, before he comes tomorrow, before he comes the next week, whenever it is, he gives this word. He said, you need to watch. You need to watch. You need to get ready, stay ready, so you can be ready when he comes. How are you going to do that tonight? Very quickly, let's look at what, what it was in the days of Noah. That's, what he, that's the direct response. To How would you get ready? You've got to get in the ark. There's no other way tonight. We don't have any other offering to give you. We don't have a bunch of hoops or 12 steps for you to follow. You've got to get in. And the only time you can get in tonight is while the door's open. Now Noah himself was moved with fear by faith. He was moved with fear when God warned him of things that were not yet. But he moved with fear by faith and built or prepared an ark to the saving of his household. And became the heir of righteousness and condemned the rest of the world because he became an heir of the righteousness which is by faith. There it is tonight. If you're going to get ready tonight, it's by faith that you can enter in. It's by faith when we look at that ark that Noah built many years ago, we know that it is a picture of salvation and the redemption that God had paid for there and Jesus gave his life for. Jesus said himself that I am the door. If any man will come in by me, he shall be saved. You've got to get in. You've got to get in. Watching tonight, getting ready. How do you get ready? You've got to get in. You go in through Jesus Christ. You go into that place of what Jesus has done and get in the ark. I'll tell you tonight, you get in the ark and in there you'll find that there's safety. Amen. There is rest tonight for those that are in the ark. Those that have found in their life is hid in Christ. We have found the rest tonight and the place of readiness and the state of readiness that when our Lord comes, we'll say with John of old, even so come Lord Jesus. Even seeing all of that tonight, and we find that, and there is one, again, I say it again, one reason, one reason only, because we've got in. And the great thing is tonight that until the Lord returns, there's still an opportunity to get in. The Lord Jesus, many years ago, as we said, went to the cross, you've heard it, there gave up his life and he died. But that's not the end of the story, he was buried and on the third day got up resurrected over death and has the keys to death and to hell and now the door has been open and we are ready a ready people tonight because we've got in we're in the ark tonight it is a place of safety it has been appointed by God as the only way we get ready by faith by believing upon that we don't have a door for you to walk through today a literal door but I'll tell you this, whenever you in your heart, whether you take a step down this aisle, whether you do it in your pew tonight, wherever it may be, when you take that faith step toward God, it is that door that is open that you can go in and find rest for your soul and get ready that if Jesus would come today, you'd go to be with him. We must believe. How are we going to stay ready tonight? It's still by faith. The just shall live by faith. We find we stay ready by faith and obedience. 
In the ark tonight is where the safety is at. In that place, and it's illustrated for us in the New Testament. In the book of Acts tonight, we're going to stay ready because we're going to stay in the boat. A great storm came, 14 days. They didn't see the sun, moon, or stars. They were in a hurricane, typhoon, cyclone, whatever you want to call it. But for two weeks, they did not see anything in the sky. It was just constant storm. They had lightened the ship. They had thrown the other uh, things overboard. They were doing all that they knew to do. And after those 14 days, Luke said all hope that we should be saved was gone. The, one of the prisoners, Paul, stood up. After those 14 days were over, and he said, be of good cheer. For the God who I have served, he sent an angel and stood by me this night. And he's told me that he's given every soul in this ship, that if you'll stay in the ship, he said this, there may be a loss of the ship, but if you'll stay in the ship, there'll not be a loss of one. There was 276 on that. He said, even if you can't swim, if you'll stay in the ship, those that can swim, he said, when the ship gets broken up, those that can swim, swim. But those that can't, just grab a board. Grab a piece. You can be delivered. Oh, some of them got nervous because the sun still didn't appear. There were lifeboats and they went back and act like they were gonna do one thing, but really they were getting ready to jump in them lifeboats. And that same God told Paul, he said, there's some back up there to no good. He went to the captain. He said, did I not tell you? You've got, they'll not be saved unless they abide in the ship. Captain went ahead and gave the orders to cut the lifeboats loose and they let them go. Threw all the tackling over and lightened the ship the best they could. And he said there was a place where two, uh, two of the seas met or two of the creeks met, met. He said we struck for there. But in the midst of that tonight, when it was all said and done, the ship struck ground and the waves beat upon it and it was broke into pieces. Those that could swim indeed did. Those that couldn't grabbed a board. And they're over there on the, the bank. Paul's getting a fire started. Somebody's doing a head count. 276. Made it safe over. But you've got to stay in the ship. You've got to stay ready tonight. I don't care how rough the seas get. I don't care what we have to face. If you'll stay in Christ, he'll take you safely over. And you can rest. As the old songwriter said, on the sunny banks of sweet deliverance. Hallelujah. Jesus were to come today, you better be ready. I think about what the writer says. The scripture tells us that, that he's going to return the second time without sin unto salvation. I don't think it's necessary. I was going to go back through and preach a little bit about when he came the first time. And based upon that, we have the assurance that he's returned the second. But I don't believe that's necessary this evening. But he indeed did come in the fullness of time. God sent forth his son. There's going to be a fullness again one day. And only according to Jesus himself, only God the Father knows that hour and that day. And I would plead with you tonight, do not allow the enemy to use the long-suffering of God, to use the patience of God, the mercy of God, as an excuse to kick the can down the road and wait another day. While I've been speaking in just the few moments that I've been before you, just in this tri-state area, the counties that I've passed through coming here, people have already passed and went on into the next world. Of all ages. I've been there with the funeral directors and carried the boxes that I, that I could really carry in one hand. And I've been there and spoke over a lady that was 104 years and in the 28 years of ministry, all ages in between. Because death knows no respecter. And when we look upon that in that day, and I've been preaching about a day when time will be no more and the Lord returns. But I want you to know, folks, tonight that when your life ends here, it is just as good as Christ returning. The probationary period is over. The dressing room is closed. The getting ready time is ended. 
As we, are, uh, as we are buried, as we go to the grave, that is how we will be resurrected. For as a tree falls, so shall it be. So shall it lie. If it falls to the north, that's where. If we are, if we fall in our sins, we'll be resurrected in our sins. But if we fall in the ark of God, in the righteousness of Christ, we will be resurrected in the same. Now that's the hope tonight. That's the blessed hope. But it's only for those that do what? That love his appearing. And if you grasp even a tenth of what eternity and what that day of judgment is going to be, if you're not ready tonight, there's no way you could love his appearing. I think about for the child of God tonight. We'll rejoice when we sing. We'll worship like we've never worshipped. But the same one that we're going to love, and we're going to cast our crowns at his feet. The, the scripture tells us tonight, for the other crowd, those that are not ready, they're going to cry for the rocks and the mountains to fall on them and to hide us from the face of him that's on the throne. You say, how in the world could there be that, that stark of a difference in their reaction? It's just as simple tonight as whether we're saved or we're unsaved. Whether we're ready or we're not. If we're ready, even so, come Lord, come on now. But if we're not and we understand anything about it at all, we'd be saying, Lord, not tonight. But there will be a day, folks, as an individual and as a collective universe, that those prayers will go unanswered. There'll be no more pleading for another day or another time. Jesus says, I will return, I'm coming. And he said, you better watch. You better be ready. For when I come, it'll not be when you're looking. It'll not be when people are looking for me. I didn't get to that illustration tonight. Come on, get you a song. I didn't get to that illustration tonight, but I read it to you. You know somebody was going to break into your house tonight, you'd made better preparation than when you come over here. If you'd go home tonight, you'd feel violated. Probably there'd be some fear attached with that. Somebody had broke into your house. Jesus said if they knowed what hour that the thief was going to come, He'd have stayed right there and have been awaiting on him and would not have suffered his goods to be taken or broken into. And he used that as an illustration. He said, you better be ready because that's just exactly how Jesus is going to come. There's been those that have made the trip to the doctor and the doctor gave them a clean bill of health and before they could get home, somebody in their family was making arrangements for them. We have no promise, we have no guarantee. David said of old, there is but one step between me and death. Calvin Evans preached that message and that's what he preached before he could come down out of the pulpit. He talked about the step of death and there a few years ago standing in that church in Tampa, Florida, outside of Tampa, Florida, he preached on that step of death and as he was coming down out of the stand, he took that step. I was preaching homecoming meeting, revival meeting over in West Portsmouth, Ohio, at a little place called Rehoboth Mission. And on a Saturday night, uh, after a week's long meeting, and the house was full, and they had rejoiced and shouted, and this lady off the front pew had taken a lap around the building. And they called for me to come preach, and I got in the stand and announced my text, and they were all standing, and down to the floor she went. And she just sat there, and they were working with her, and They'd called the squad and she's just sitting like this on the floor. And she was looking, still was conscious. And here's what she was saying. She was saying, they were asking, are you in pain? She said, no. Are you hurting anywhere or is there anything? What, what can we do? Do we need to lay you down? She'd say, no. And then directly she said, what's happening to me? Wasn't no fear, wasn't no panic there. She just said, what's happening? I'll tell you what was happening. She was changing worlds. Amen. Amen. Yeah. They came and 
brought the, the gurney in and put her on the bed and took her out. By the time they got to the, the ambulance in the parking lot, she was gone. Passed into the next world. And that is just how real it will be one day. And it's still happening around this world tonight, but one day it's going to be that and it's going to be a mass happening along this world and across this world. Just what I read to you tonight, he's going to return. And when he does, you better be ready. And if you're not ready tonight, this would be a good place to get started. Say, I don't know how all this, all this works. You don't have to know. You just got to get started. Believe that Jesus died for you and rose again. That will be enough. Jesus said, God said, that's just all I've been looking for. I'll begin a good work in you. And if you'll yield and get with him tonight, he'll, he'll perform that work until the day that Jesus returns. Let's stand across the building. As they sing tonight, sure love to pray with someone this evening. If you're not ready, young or old alike, somewhere in between. A great day coming. There's a great day coming. Young man, young woman, you never asked Jesus into your heart. With the saints and the you want to be ready? We invite you to come. Be parted right and left. Are you ready? Maybe for someone that here tonight that said, to I, I've been come. wanting to do that. Are I've been wanting to do that. I've been meaning to do that. Just move ready? right on out. Some have come, but you just come Are on. Said, I've been meaning to do that. I've wanted to do that. Do it tonight. Do it tonight. Do it tonight. I want to get ready. I don't want to take a chance. I don't want to look and wait one day too late. I want to get ready tonight. I want to ask Jesus tonight to make room for me. He already has tonight. He's just been waiting for you to look his way. A great day coming. There's a great day coming by and by. When the saints and the sinners shall be parted right and left. Are you ready for that day to come? Are you That's ready? That's the question tonight. Are you ready? Are and if not, you and if not, why not tonight? Why not move out tonight? For the Get started on this journey. Get started. Said it will be tonight. When the sinner shall hear don't his doom, depart, I know ye not. Are you ready for that day to come? Are you ready for that day? God has made a way that we can be ready. As I started the sermon tonight, the devil loves to play tricks. He loves to counterfeit. What God has paid for and what God has provided. and Unfortunately, people are believing those things and people are being deceived. That is the purpose tonight of the declaring of God's word, the preaching of God's word. As the scripture says, we're begotten by that. The lies of the enemy are uncovered and exposed by the light of God's Word. 
And by that, there is a way provided that we can get ready. We don't have to live day after day the same old, same old. Just doing those things that please ourselves. We can get on board and get ready tonight to meet God. testimony tonight of the amazing grace of God reaching down to you